Hi everyone, so there's a juicy rumor out there that Nintendo has just registered a patent for the Nintendo 64. Uh, why is this relevant? Well, recently they did two things. They did a Nintendo Classic, which was a small system that came preloaded with over 30 games on it. And then they just did a Super Nintendo version of that, which was, uh, you know, just a small, came with slightly less games, but was just as successful. So the next question is, is will they do a Nintendo 64 Classic? And it's not a matter of if they will, but when will they? There's no way they're going to run off the success of the first two and then just stop there. So there's rumors that this could be in works right now. And if this is in works, I think the problem a lot of people are going to try to talk about and what a lot of people do when it comes to this generation of games is both the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 are not easy systems to emulate. So one of the big counter arguments to this system even being in work is due to that. Uh, normally I would agree with this argument that this is a harder generation to emulate, but then you start to look, uh, you just go straight to the Wii U or the Nintendo Virtual Market and you look at the games that have been released for the Nintendo 64, so you know that it's possible. They might not be the best, but I haven't heard many complaints. Uh, I did compile a list of uh, games that have been released on the Virtual Console uh, may, not all of these have made it to North America, but it just goes to show that these games are possible. Uh, you have 1080 Snowboarding, Bomberman 64, Custom Robo V2, which was a Japan exclusive, Donkey Kong 64, Excite Bike 64, F-Zero X, Harvest Moon 64, Kirby 64, both Legend of Zelda games, Mario Golf, Mario Kart, Mario Tennis, Ogre Battle, Paper Mario, Pokemon Snap, that would actually be really cool if they found a way to uh, not only emulate it on the N64 Classic, but find a way for motion controls and moving it around, you know, now that they've had so much uh, skills and with the Wii U and the Switch, they pretty much have it down now. Uh, Sin and Punishment, this is a really cool real shooter that never left Japan, uh, aside from the virtual market. Uh, Star Fox 64, Super Mario 64, which I think is a shoe in that's going to be on the console. Uh, Wave Race 64, and then Yoshi Story. All of these titles I just mentioned off are, are games that are currently available or have been available on the virtual marketplace. So for the, a lot of these titles to not make it to the classic, I think would be surprising. I think this is actually a good uh, place to start off with to go look if you're if you're trying to compile a list of games you think might be on the system. Uh, Nintendo in general is going to be the primary uh, amount of games on the system. I think we're probably going to see around 10 to 15 games on this console. I don't think we're going to see more than that. It'd be really great if we did, uh, but I, I don't see it. Uh, Nintendo, as I mentioned, is going to be the bulk of the games that will be on um, the N64 Classic. Uh, with the exception of uh, Rare, the only two titles that even made the top 20 grossing games in the N64 library are Star Wars uh, Episode One Racer and then Star Wars Shadow of the Empire, I believe was the name of it. I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, I think what we're going to have an issue with or we're going to see an issue with are Rare titles. There are some titles like Donkey Kong 64, obviously Rare made that or worked on that, but uh, I don't think we'll have a trouble licensing that because it's a Nintendo property. But games like Banjo Kazooie, Diddy Kong Racing, Perfect Dark, I think those are where we're going to jump through some ho hoops. However, Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, he's actually cool with partnering with Nintendo and stuff. Like he's mentioned it countless times that he would love to see Banjo-Kazooie in the new Smash Brothers game and even the previous entry. So with that being said, like maybe he'd be willing to work with Nintendo on uh, uh, N64 Classic. This is part of the history of that system and that would be really cool if we've seen some partnerships there. I think it's a uh, it's reaching uh, a lot like you know when you had the Super Nintendo Classic one of the big things that was a selling point aside from all the amazing games that were already listed on there was uh, for me anyways was Star Fox 2. This was a game created back in the day. It was 100% done and then they just didn't release the game uh, in fear that it would uh, be in competition with the Star Fox that they're going to bundle in. Not, not bundle in but sell with the N64 uh, at launch so they end up chopping it. Later, many years later, they threw it on here. So, what will be the big game to sell the N64? I mean, obviously, you have all your big titles, but I think one game that could help it, help it out a lot 
would be GoldenEye. And uh, you don't see this. You don't, there's, a, there's a problem. Like Rare made this, so you'd have to get Rare on board to agree to it. And then also you have to license out the Go GoldenEye. Like it's a 007 franchise. And that's why I don't think you've seen GoldenEye in like the virtual marketplace or anything else. Uh, the, the closest thing you'll get normally is Perfect Dark. And that's if Microsoft will, you know, let that let that go. Um, so I think we're gonna have a fun system here. I really hope this comes true. Uh, there's a lot of great titles. Uh, you know, obviously I mentioned, uh, you know, your Star Wars, your Nintendo, and your Rare, and your top 20 selling games for the N64. But there's countless games that are amazing on the system. You have Army Men, you have uh, the Cruising series, California Speed, you have Gauntlet Legends, uh, Blitz 2000, uh, uh, just so many games. Oh, Turok. Uh, but unfortunately, like a lot of these titles I just mentioned are from defunct companies. They've went under since the, you know, since the era of then 64. So now you have to find out where, who owns these properties now? Does anyone own these properties? And is Nintendo gonna go through the work to try to talk to these people, to try to process this? And that, that's, a, that's a big question. And I think, uh, I think we could just look forward to this. Uh, it would be really cool. I don't know if it's too soon, but E3 is just a month away. We have June rolling right around. So how cool would that be if, uh, you know, the N64 Classic was announced uh, during E3 and with the lineup and everything. Just just something to go right into this holiday season. And that's really ho how I hope this drops. I hope this isn't something that we're all speculating now and just never happens. Uh, I, I do strongly believe that this is going to happen. Uh, so hopefully it does. Uh, but what, what are some of the games you would love to see on this? Uh, there, like I mentioned, there's countless games that are going to be that are out there for the N64. I think most of it's the majority of it's going to be Nintendo properties on the thing. But if you could get some of your favorite third-party companies on there, what games would you want and why? Uh, let me know. Anyways, until next time. See you guys.